Hi, I'm Christine Cushing and welcome to another helping of my favorite foods. Today, I want to take you back to the Greek kitchen and to a family recipe that was my dad's most requested and popular and that a Greek gathering would not be complete without. Get ready for pastizio, aka Greek lasagna. Pame. Pastizio has three components. We got a meat sauce, we got a bechamel, and we got pasta. Step one, the meat sauce. A little bit of olive oil in the pan. First ingredient to go in there is the meat. Okay, I like to spread the meat out nicely in the pan so that it browns evenly. Right now my temp is high, as high as it'll go. And this process here, this browning the meat, is gonna take a pretty long time. How long do you think it's gonna take? You'll see, it takes longer than you think. In the meantime, chop in an onion or a shallot, which I always call onion. You can't have a Greek recipe without garlic. Absolutely true. I'm gonna do a couple of cloves. Always removing the germ. Phase two, let me show you what's happening. I call this the squeaky part of browning the meat. You hear that squeaking? Why do I put the meat in first? I want to evaporate the moisture before it even starts to caramelize because that's what happens. After that, I'm going to add the onions because really you just want to sweat the onions. It's the meat that's going to give you the majority of the flavor, not the onions. My dad, Tony, was famous for a few recipes. This was probably his most popular and most requested. So anywhere where he would go, visiting friends, visiting family, even you know going to visit people not even in the country, when he would get there, they would ask him to make pastizio because it was just so incredible. Now, the one slight downside of him making pastizio was the kitchen was a total disaster. I mean, disaster, but it didn't matter because it was so good that people said, please come and make the pastizio, even though I know I'm going to have to hose down the house afterwards. Okay. Do you hear that? It's changing now. So do you see what I'm talking about? That is what I call brown meat. And what you hear also with all your senses, I always say you have to cook with all your senses. The meat sounds totally different. It's almost like popping in the pan. And what do I smell? I smell like as if I was roasting or grilling meat. That's the Maillard reaction. So now I turn it right down to a bit of a lower temperature. I make a little well in the center and I hit it with the shallots. Now I mix everybody together because my onions have sweated. My garlic also has sweated. And now, guess what we're going in with? A little bit of red wine, baby. If you could smell this now, seriously, all it is is meat, some onions and garlic and red wine. Does it smell good? A little bit of tomato paste, just to give it a bit of thickness, a little body to the sauce. Tomatoes going in. And now I'm gonna add some aromatics. Uh, I'm gonna go in with bay leaf. Greek tomato sauce, meat sauce always has a bay leaf. I'm gonna throw in a couple. And must, you must have Greek oregano. Look at this. I brought this from the hills of Greece. Oh, does that smell so good. It just like concentrated flavor. That's gonna go in the meat sauce now too. Here's where it really does take a detour, the spices. So the hallmark of a Greek meat sauce is these kind of Eastern spices. So you've got allspice, 
always clove for me and always cinnamon. Now, sometimes I put allspice in, sometimes I don't, but for me, clove and cinnamon is a must have. So I'm gonna just use my own mortar and pestle and grind a little bit of allspice and a little clove. Make sure everybody's playing nicey nice in there. And I just want to simmer this, not for too long, about 40 to 45 minutes until it gets nice and rich and the flavors start melding and a little bit of that moisture evaporates with the lid on. The spices are crazy. So I'm going to put a lid on that. It's ready to go. It's going to be on standby for phase two, which is the bechamel. Or what the Greeks call besamela, because there's no sh in Greek. It's s, just saying. So bechamel, you want to click on my separate video for bechamel for all the step-by-step -step details to perfect your bechamel, because you really need to do that. So like I always do in a bechamel, butter and flour. I'm adding my milk off the heat. Now let's talk cheese. The cheese that's iconic in Greece for this dish is kefalotiri. Let me show you. It's a beautiful, salty, usually sheep's milk, but sometimes it can be goat's milk cheese as well. Similar to a pecorino, an Italian pecorino. They're, they're similar, but not quite the same, just like any cheese is. I love this cheese. It's definitely salty. It's got that bite and it's going to be layered throughout the pasticcio. It's going to be a little bit in the pasta. It's going to be in the bechamel and it's going to be sprinkled on top. I mean, we're making pasticcio, right? Cheese is grated. I want to keep my eye on this baby here because this bechamel is definitely thicker than, for example, my bolognese lasagna, which you gotta click on that recipe, by the way. It's interesting, on paper, in theory, these two recipes look almost the same. There's some pasta, there's some bechamel, and there's some meat sauce, but they're so different in terms of how everything's put together. Gotta have some nutmeg. So in Greece, the pasta for pasticcio is a very specific one. It's called basically, there's no name, it's called pasticcio pasta. It looks like this. So it's almost like bucatini. It's a big, let's say thick spaghetti with a hole in it. All right, at this point, it's off the heat. Everything's good. It's thickened, beautiful. I've seasoned it. I've tasted it. I'm going to take this beautiful kefalotiri and put in about a third of it into the bechamel. This is something really specific and particular that my dad used to do. So I'm going to separate. I have four eggs. I'm going to separate four of them and we're going to use four yolks and two whites. So my bechamel is hot and now I need to add the egg yolks to it. There's a, a technique that's called tempering, which I'm going to do because I don't want to basically cook these right off the bat. I want them to rise in the oven and give me a nice creamy custard. A little bit of this hot bechamel and stir it into my egg yolks. Okay, assembly time. Pasta just been drained. Bechamel with cheese done, meat sauce done. It's time to assemble. So here comes that beautiful pasta. So this is al dente. A little bit of olive oil going in, just a little bit. A small amount of this gorgeous meat sauce I actually put right into the pasta.
So this way, by putting a little bit of that meat sauce into the pasta, you get a bit of the flavor of the tomato and the meat right in with the pasta, as opposed to saving it all in layers on top. I like to mix it in. That's what my dad did. Two other things going in here. A little bit of that saved kefalotiri. So this is salty and beautiful cheese. I'm saving some for the top too. Now it's time for these two egg whites that were reserved. So just beating them to break them up a bit. So now just as another little precaution, a bit more olive oil in the bottom of the pan. Okay, so the next thing is the remainder of that meat sauce is going to go right on top of the pasta and create sort of a little layer so that the bechamel doesn't sink in. Look at that meat sauce. Oh, mama. So here, I'm just flattening it out so that the bechamel will sit right on top. The last thing to complete this beautiful dish is the bechamel is going to come to greet the pasta and the meat. Look at this. So it's just barely making it in to my baking dish here. I've got my oven preheating at 375. I like it at a higher temperature. It's going to give me a much deeper, darker crust. And now the finale, a little bit more kefalotiri on top to give it that golden crustiness. This baby's going into the oven for about 45 to 50 minutes, then we are going to have something amazing to taste. Goodness. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But now the bad news. I have to wait at least 45 minutes for it to just cool down a little bit, find its shape, and then we get to have some. And 45 minutes later, what seemed like four hours, but it's 45 minutes later, finally we get to cut look at this baby all right so nine pieces I think I'm gonna cut and I want to serve a piece for us to taste I purposely leave the bechamel looser so that it doesn't cook all the way through and you kind of cut through it and it keeps its shape. If you want a firmer bechamel, you keep it cooking longer until it's firmer or you can add the egg whites to it. But this makes a soft, delicate, creamy bechamel just like my dad Tony would have made. Are you ready to taste? Oh my goodness! It's just insane how good this is. All of those flavors deliver 100, 100, 100. Flavor, aroma, visuals, and all of the spices in that meat sauce. It's great. And the pasta being a little bit al dente and all those little tricks in between. Tony knew exactly what he was doing. Thank you so much for sharing this very special episode of My Favorite Foods with me. My dad's absolutely most iconic famous recipe. See you next time. Please subscribe. Let me know what I can help you with. Until next time.